Hi guys, let's pick up where we left off last time. You may remember that uh, after we did the lab last week measuring the characteristics of an NPN transistor, I pointed out that if you put a bunch of NPN transistors together along with some PMP transistors, you can make a very potent amplifier called an operational amplifier. Uh, in the lab, we have these LM324s because it's so cold, the university decided to shut down today. We're going to do this lab using Tinkercad, and um, that means that we're not going to use the LM324 because it's not in Tinkercad. They don't have a model for that, but they've got a model for a 741, which is uh, very similar, and it will work for our purposes. Basically, the way this amplifier works is you take whatever voltage is on the positive input, that's so-called not inverting input, that would be this pin right here, and the inverting input, the negative input, that's this pin right here. The difference between those two voltages gets multiplied by a big number called the gain, the open loop gain of the amplifier, and the output is equal to that um, result. So it's sort of a mathematic, it does math. This amplifier does math. It takes the difference between two voltages, multiplies them by a big number, and then that is the output voltage. Now the thing is, this big number, while we know it's big, its actual value is not very well known. In other words, it could be somewhere between 100,000 and 10 million, and we don't really know exactly where it is in there. So the idea is to use this fact that this number is big, along with the concept of feedback, to make it so that the output can be well defined and that we can get this guy to do uh, what we what we need it to do in the laboratory context. So what I want you guys to do this week is to set up a circuit to uh, drive a voltage input to an amplifier with feedback that should have a well defined gain. I want you to measure the gain and see that the gain is the net gain of the amplifier with feedback is what we want it to be. So in order to do that, we need to generate some kind of signal that we can amplify. So what I'd like you to do is to set up the PWM output, the, the, the same one we used uh, the last two weeks to drive the transistor and the diode. I want you to set that up, but I, but I don't want you to use as large of a resistance in that filter because I'd like it to have a little bit of uh, ripple. I want, I want to have a waveform that looks something like this, sort of like a sawtooth. So what that means is you're going to dial down the time constant of that RC circuit that you connect the PWM output to so that there is a noticeable, measurable variation in that voltage. So um, I'll let you figure out, in order to generate a voltage like this, how much ripple would you need? I'll, I'll tell you the rule of thumb I use is that um, if the time constant of the circuit divided by the period of the a waveform is sort of the fraction of the output voltage that is the ripple. So the ripple you're going to get, let's say the time constant is one-tenth of the uh, period of the PWM signal, then the ripple is going to be something like one-tenth of five volts, half a volt, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to let you figure out how to set. You keep the capacitance tw 22 microfarads and just adjust the resistance to get the right guy. Now in Tinkercad, of course, you can set that however you like because you can dial up whatever resistance you need. Now, uh, the handout or the in the repository, it shows an LM324 as an amplifier. We're going to be using an LM741, and I'll show you how that works in a minute, but I want to point out that as far as we're concerned, there's only five pins that matter. There's the plus input, the minus input, the output, power, and ground. So all we have to worry about, actually this is ground and that's power on the LM324, but power, ground, plus and minus, um, here, here it is in action. This is the circuit you're actually going to build. Here's the RC circuit uh, that you're going to set up to give a sawtooth of a couple tenths of a volt, I suppose. And then um, all we're going to do is have the output of the amplifier connect to a resistance, which I'm going to let you choose. And then uh, this is a voltage divider, kind of like the voltage divider we talked about the very first day in class. This is another voltage divider. Um, 
and the voltage between these two resistors at the junction of these two resistors you're going to send back to the inverting input. Okay? And the signal that you want to amplify goes into the not inverting input. And my claim is that there's a nice relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage that you should be able to measure and compare to what you expect. So uh, what I'd like you to do, there's a little exercise described here. I'd like you to try to work this out. And um, I'm not going to tell you what the answer is, but if you, uh, if you struggle with it, please uh, let's have a conversation. Maybe I'll, I'll set up the forum on ACE or something so that we can uh, have that conversation online. And uh, I, I, I really need you to try to do this. Don't give up if you're, if you're frustrated or confused. Just read it, think about it and see if you can figure out what these two resistances need to be. Or no, uh, what this guy says is if R3 is 10 and R2 is 1, and that the voltage on the plus input is, is 0.3, what would be the output uh, of the amplifier to make these two inputs equal to each other? That's the question. So you sort of need to think about that and figure out what the output voltage has to be in order to satisfy the condition that these two inputs are equal. Now, why would that be important? Uh, what I want to do is go back to this equation. In most situations where we're using an amplifier, the output voltage is something between uh, the low the low voltage of power supply, so in this case ground, and the high voltage power supply, in this case 5 volts. Um, you can also run these amplifiers between, say, negative 5 and plus 5, or negative 10 and plus 10. So the power supply connected to the negative power pin is not necessarily ground, but it is in, in our experiment this week. But uh, normally the output voltage is somewhere between the low voltage and the high voltage of the power supply pins. So it's something like, you know, 2 volts or 3 volts or 4 volts or something like that. So this is going to be volts. This number is a big number, like 100,000 or a million. And so the difference between these two voltages when we're in the active range where the output voltage is volts is going to be measured in microvolts or tens of microvolts, very tiny voltages that we can't even easily measure. And so the rule of thumb is that the output does whatever it has to do to make these two voltages the same. So, and that's basically what, um, that's what this, res this recipe says. Let's see, where is the recipe here? Aha, here it is. The amplifier is designed to do whatever it can to make its plus and minus inputs equal to one another. That's what I just said. So um, the idea is to do this example down here, um, this example, where R3 is 10K, R2 is 1K. Work that out. Figure out what the output voltage has to be to make these two inputs the same. And then you'll understand how the thing works, basically. Okay. What I want you to do in the lab, at least in Tinkercad this week, is to produce a gain of 2. In other words, I want you to use, choose R1, R2 and R3 to give this amplifier a net gain of 2, so that if the input is 1 volt, the out should, output should be 2 volts. Does that make sense? Um, and let's say I want these to be uh, thousands of ohms, so maybe make this one 5,000 ohms and then figure out what that one has to be, or make this one 10,000 ohms and then figure out what that one has to be. I'm not too particular. I don't, it, I, I don't want to specify exactly what either of these is, but uh, the ratio of the two should be well defined, it turns out. So if you choose this one as 5k, this one's going to be fixed. It's got to be a certain value in order to get a gain of 2, and I'd like you to work that out. Does that make sense? So you're going to, uh, ultimately, you're going to choose this resistance to get the right amount of ripple voltage. You're going to choose, I'll tell you, let maybe just go ahead and use 5k for this one. If you want to use 10k, that's okay too. I don't care what you select it to be. But once you've selected this one, then this one's going to be fixed. That, does that make sense? Or, well, actually, if you select this one, then that one's going to be. The ratio of these two is going to be fixed. You get to pick one arbitrarily. It doesn't really matter that much. I don't want it to be too small, because then you're going to stress the output current of the amplifier. It's limited. I don't want to make it too big, because if these resistances are too big, 
then the currents get so small that the tiny little leakage currents at the inputs become important. Oh, that's one other thing I forgot to say. Um, the other rule of thumb about these amplifiers is that the currents in and out of these inputs are very tiny. Now, in reality, they're not zero. They're tens of microamps, something like that. Um, but as long as the currents in these other branches are milliamps, then we don't care that much about microamps. If the currents here are milliamps, then a microamp or two isn't going to bother you. So that's why it's important these resistances not get too big, because if these are too large, then the currents get very tiny, and then these little leakage currents make a difference, and, and then the thing will operate the way you think it will. Okay, so there's a trick here called the flag technique. Basically, we're going to be measuring voltages that are varying over the period of the PWM output, which is like 2 milliseconds. And so we need to sample voltages very quickly. And if you're sending data back to the computer every time you sample, uh, it's going to be too slow. So this trick is basically to set the thing up. Um, and by the way, this analog right puts the output voltage at 2.5 volts. That's too high for this experiment. right? We want it to be... Uh, more like one volt, so you're going to have to change that to something more appropriate for a one volt output. Um, but here I want to point out what this guy does, it collects data. We're only collecting data here from one input, but of course in your experiment you're going to need two, you're going to need to measure the input voltage to the amplifier and the output voltage of the amplifier. So you need two voltages. But you want to read them very quickly and also store the times very quickly. Um, but don't send them to the computer yet get all the data, then when you're done getting the data, then run this function to casually and at whatever speed the computer goes at, you can send them without worrying about slowing down your data acquisition. So you can see the way the thing works. There's a variable up here called flag, which I initialized to zero, and then the trick is you say, look, if flag is equal to zero, then collect the data, print the data, and then set flag equal to one. Flag is global, so the next time loop gets called, flag is now 1, and it just does this. And this guy just flashes the, um, flashes the LED on and off. Okay, That's all it does. So uh, you can look at the Arduino, and at, when the LED starts flashing, that means the thing has done its bit, and it's, and it's over. Now in the Tinkercad, um, you know, uh, it, it won't matter so much because... Uh, you can just see the data being collected. Anyway, let's create a new circuit and I'll show you how this thing works. <clears throat> um, first of all, I want to point out that there is a... Uh, get a breadboard, get an Arduino. There is a, uh, a guy here that is handy. I'm going to get an oscilloscope and we'll see that that's a... Uh, it's a very simple oscilloscope. It, it doesn't have any knobs, so it sets its own self, except you, you probably do want to set the time per division to one millisecond, because that's the kind of time scale we'll be using. So what I'll do is just grab a... Um, I want to grab a resistor. I want to grab a capacitor. I'm going to go ahead and set this guy to ground, set this guy up here to ground. Um, I want to take the PWM output, pin 3, and send that guy over here. Then we're going to connect the resistor to the capacitor and connect the other side of the capacitor to ground. And uh, then what we'll do is just measure with the scope here the voltage on the capacitor. Hmm. And I'll just say uh, start the simulation and it does nothing. Why? Well, oh, I didn't. I didn't set any code. So let's go in here and let's, uh, I'll say pin mode 3 is an output, right? And then analog, right? Pin 3, let's do 127. And uh, you can see that it's uh, 
it's going up and down. Now that's too much. That's uh, 5 volts. Look, that's 20 volts. So 10 volts down here, 10 volts up here. So that's a 5 volt variation. That's too much ripple. So what's wrong? Um, this guy is 1,000 ohms. That guy is... A hundred nanofarads. So let's bump that up. Twenty-two microfarads. And you can see there's a little bit of ripple here. That's not quite as much as I want. So you're going to have to fiddle with that resistance to get enough ripple to, to match what's in the handout. But but that's the idea. The other thing I want to point out is if you want an amplifier, you can just search for amplifier, and there's the 741. And uh, the nice thing about Tinkercad, of course, is that it actually tells you what the bits and pieces are. So um, you can hover. That's an offset pin. We don't need that. That's the output pin. That's the positive power supply pin. Let's see. That's an offset pin. We don't need that. That's the negative, then inverting input. That's uh, the B minus. That's the not inverting input. That's V plus. So these two guys will be the inputs to the amplifier. And of course, that's power minus. That I will be putting, uh, setting that to ground. So um, you'll want to connect this guy to ground. You'll want to connect this guy to power. So how are we going to get power? We'll have to come over here. Um, 5 volts. Connect him to power. Connect this power to that power. Boom, and then we've got power. Now you've got power and ground. Now go ahead and add the resistors. Set the use this signal from the capacitor as the input, and and you're off to the races. Of course, you want to measure. You want to use the analog input ports to measure the input voltage to the amplifier and the output voltage from the amplifier. Okay, that's the way it's going to work. Okay, there's one other bit I want to share with you guys, and that is. Uh, in the flag technique example from the handout, I uh, let me go ahead and get rid of that. Um, well, a couple things. Uh, this is what it's going to end up looking like when you're done. I went ahead and cooked up the circuit, and you can see it's sort of in miniature here. There's the drive signal. Let's go ahead and tinker it. You can see. Uh, this is 4 volts full scale, so that's 2 volts above. So this is uh, this is between 1 and 1.5 one and volts is where this input signal is going. The output signal you can see is, uh, well, this is 1 volt, two, it's right around 2 volts. So it looks like this is having a gain of approximately 2. So that's the, that's the goal. Let's look at the code. Um, I want to point out, yeah, you've got two inputs. So when you're measuring, you're going to have... Uh, you're going to need two arrays, one for the input and one for the output. There's another trick I wanted to point out here. It, uh, when you print out the times, it's nice to get the time since the thing started. And so what I'm going to suggest is that you define T0 to be the micros before you get into this collecting loop. And then subtract away T0 from micros uh, to get the time. So it'll be collecting the times in microseconds since the loop started. Okay. The other thing is, since it takes a while to um, get to equilibrium with that uh, PWM circuit, I will, I, I'd suggest you put a delay in. If you want to look at the transient behavior at the beginning, where the RC circuit is charging up, take the delay out and you'll see that transient happen. Um, but because we have such a limited amount of output in Tinkercad, you don't really want to mess with that. So I would put a delay in here before you collect data to make sure that that transient's done before you try to measure the gain. Okay, um, and that's basically it. So I hope you guys have fun and we'll talk to you soon.